Snook Table. Snook Table was developed in early 90s um, to kind of give you a guideline for manual material handling. It was developed by Snook and Seriolo. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. In the Liberty Mutual, sometimes people call it Liberty Mutual Guidelines for Manual Material Handling, but most common name for this is Snook Table. So it gives you a guideline for um, basically lifting, lowering, pushing, pulling, carrying these five areas that mostly people do um, when they manually handle material. Now for um, each of these um, tape, each of these categories, these five categories for lifting task, it has um, three different types of lifting. So it categorizes lift into three categories: one ending below knuckle height, ending between knuckle and shoulder, ending above shoulder height. Um, so and then also lowering. Uh, has three different categories of lowering and then pushing has two different categories uh, pulling two different categories carrying does not have any categories and then for each of these categories both there is tables for both male and female because you know physically uh, male is stronger so they will have a separate guideline than female now I will show you explain uh, these tables uh, how to use this um, guideline uh, also I'll give you a practical example uh, this is a job description from Walmart website I directly copy this job from Walmart website in the local Walmart website they're looking for a person is talking backroom and receiving associate the job responsibility requires them basically perform this uh, pushing pulling uh, lowering carrying all of these activities so uh, this is a perfect example job to use a snook table um, ergonomic evaluation um, and then what I did was I in the analysis part you will have to collect some data uh, for example how frequently they are lifting um, and then how heavy uh, the object they are lifting if it's 25 pounds heavy and then uh, how much is the lift um, so you have to measure all this um, to uh, evaluate the job and this is actually one of my exam questions that I ask my students and typically I ask these three questions first use the table to find the person of the people can do this job and then how should you hire uh, a person based on a snook table so we're going to go each of these um, step by step so let me show you uh, so i have extracted all this data now i have basically produced this data in real world application you would collect all of them uh, and then i have kind of put it in a column so lifting so this is the thing up happening uh, one lift every uh, five minutes and then so every five minutes on lift and then i have the hand distance lifting distance and then the amount of uh, weight that is lifted so let's go check those tables now a snook table has total um I think 22 tables or something um, so I will post a link to this document so in case um, if you use it so this is one of the tables says that um, lifting ending below knuckle height for this particular job I said for the exam purpose that it is ending between and knuckle of course these associates do all kinds of liftings in that case you have to kind of time average those and see what's the worst case and you know a little bit more details for this example I said just use a lift between shoulder and knuckle just to make sure that my student understand the table and how to apply them so this is below knuckle height so that's not gonna work for us this is below knuckle height for male this is between knuckle and shoulder for female so one lift every five minutes so this is and then the hand distance was given 10 inches you can go back to the video to see all these numbers so I'm gonna be looking at these columns 
and then um, the object weight was given 25 pounds so there is no 25 pounds there is a 26 pounds here so you basically follow this and also the object lifting was done about 20 inches so you're gonna follow this row so 58 percent people can female can do this job so I have extracted this value 58 percent and for uh, for female and for male I have extracted 90 percent people uh, can do this lifting job and then for lowering job I have got 73 for female and more than 90 percent for male now one of the thing I would like to discuss here this question is asking what is the percentage of people can do this job so for lifting 58 percentile female uh, and uh, 98 90 percent male uh, can do this job uh, lowering job I have found 73 percent female so this is for lift and this um, lowering job I found 90 percent male and 73 percent female can do this job on the next question this is the most common mistake in the exam question number two what percentile female with respect to the strength should be hired for the job now if 58 percent people can do the job then uh, 100 minus 58 which is 42 uh, percent cannot do this job so you have to get a female 42 percentile or is stronger with respect to physical strength to perform this job so that one mistake people do for some reason it's not understood well in this case 27 percentile or stronger can do this job so the final answer would be 42 percentile or stronger because if it's 42 percent or stronger that also includes the um, 27 percentile or stronger people as well so the answer would be you should hire should not hire anybody less than or weaker than 42 percentile so that's one mistake people usually do another mistake they do if you look at the tables they only go um, less than 90 percent people or over less than 10 percent or over 90 it doesn't say 100 percent you cannot have 100% in a real world situation. There will be always somebody who is really, really strong. There will be always some female is stronger than male. So it, it's, it is impossible to cover 100%. So in ergonomics, you should go for say 90%, 99%, maybe 95th percentile, but you should not say 100%. So when a student finds more than 90% people can do, even though the table does not give you 100%, table says 90%. So use 90%. So a uh, lot of time I have found that this particular question um, you know instead of writing 90% male some student write 100% which is not correct because you cannot have 100% in real world situation there will be always some outlier somewhere so um, that's not really a realistic statement so do not say 100% just say 90% that's it you don't have to make up anything just say what is in the table um, so this is uh, how you use this NOOC table um, I just give you for only um, lowering lifting example you can see um, let me show you the uh, number of table it has uh, basically here is this table uh, I think total 22 tables here for all these different types of table, different types of work.